Welcome back. With just two weeks to go until Election Day, candidates are pulling out all the stops to try to win your vote. And as we do every Tuesday, we've invited our political analysts here to talk about some of the big races. Gentlemen, once again, thank you. Kevin Knuth, the Democrat, John McGauley, the Republican, and the new Sentinel, Kevin Leininger. We appreciate you being here. Let's talk about the Indiana House. Um, generally speaking, right now, Democrats are in control 52 to 48. Do you see that changing at all? And what would that mean if it did change? Let's start with you, Kevin Leininger. Well, it uh, could change, obviously. It should be a uh, Republican evening. Uh, how much that translates to the state level uh, remains to be seen. But, uh, yeah, and uh, obviously there are issues that uh, the legislature controls, redistricting, budgeting, uh, that kind of thing, all of which have uh, an impact at the local level. How do you think things will shake out, John? Kevin mentioned redistricting. You've obviously got the governor's plans for local government reform that still are kind of in their infancy, got a long way to go. Uh, it, it absolutely has the potential to change. You're seeing the state party, the governor, uh, putting a lot of resources into this. Mike Pence is going all over the state campaigning for individual legislative candidates, something you don't usually see. Yeah, Kevin? Uh, well, I would say it's possible it will change, but I don't think control of it's going to change. Democrats will contain to control the House. Okay. One of the particular races that we've been watching, and viewers in our area have probably heard a lot about, they've seen the commercials, is for District 51. You can take a look at the map there. Obviously, it's, uh, it covers the counties north of Fort Wayne, so people in Fort Wayne will not be on the ballot. But as I said, we've seen th they are spending tons of money in Fort Wayne, radio and TV ads. Uh, Dick Dodge, Cody Ross. Uh, what do you think about that race? Uh, Dick uh, Dodge, well the incumbent. It's one of those surprisingly competitive races this year that uh, you would not think a Democrat would have a good shot up there, but apparently he's tracking very well in tracking polls. Uh, Cody Ross is coming on strong. I think he's got the momentum behind him right now. Yeah, you've said, John, that you, you've been surprised that it's been a close yeah. race. It, it shouldn't be competitive. I mean, Dodge has won this race by 10 points in a lot of years, but this is a lot like what happened here in Allen County in 2002 where you saw the Republican Party reach a tipping point with some, some incumbents on county council who had been here for a while. Dick Dodge is 80. They may have reached that tipping point in that district. Kevin? Well, yeah, who thought uh, we'd be sitting here two weeks before the election talking about uh, the race up in Angola? But clearly the Democrats have identified Dodge as vulnerable. They're pouring a lot of money into the race. And that could be the ones that uh, really tip the other way. Well, the, the ads, as I mentioned, have gotten a lot of, uh, a lot of talk. We're, let's take a look at one of those right now. Dick Dodge voted against raising the minimum wage. Dick Dodge voted against giving us $250 million in property tax relief. Dick Dodge gave Indianapolis Sports Stadiums a $250 million bailout, but voted to cut millions. What do you think of the ads? Uh, well, I think the ads on both sides are pretty hard-hitting. Uh, that's not uncommon in, in campaigns right now. And uh, I, the problem with being an incumbent is you have a record. So when you make votes, they come back to haunt you sometimes. Well, John, before we get to you, I want to go ahead. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look at the ad for Dick Dodge. Liberal Democrat Cody Ross hasn't figured out what he wants to be when he grows up. First, he wanted to be a teacher. Then, a trial lawyer. Now, Cody Ross says he wants to be a politician. Well, all right, he wants to be a politician. What do you think, John? You know, obviously, everybody's going all in here because this is one of a couple of pickups the Democrats have an opportunity for in Indiana. There's one up here, there's one down south, and very few in between. And they're really not willing to, to hold anything back here. And Cody Ross has outraised Dick Dodge two to one plus. So he's, he's got the resources to go all in. Is that telling, do you think, Kevin? Well, I, I think the Dodge uh, ad was just a little bit condescending, uh, <laughs> talking about youth in, in a kind of a immature way. I don't think that will really appeal to too many voters, and I think that uh, looks a little desperate, frankly. Well, we'll see how that one shakes out. Let's uh, shift gears for a second and talk about the Senate race. Obviously, Dan Coats uh, has been leading in most of the polls. He's running against Brad Ellsworth and uh, Libertarian Rebecca Sink Burris. They took part in one debate already. We have another debate coming up in town on Friday night. What do, we, what do you expect from this debate, Kevin? Well, if it follows the script, it'll be uh, Coates calling Ellsworth a liberal and Ellsworth <laughs> calling Coates a lobbyist. And really, that's all either one of them seem to have, and I don't see it changing. So no surprises, you don't none, think, John? None at all. Ever since the, the primary, I mean, for the last you know, three, four, or five months now, these polls have barely budged. Uh, Ellsworth has thrown everything he's got at Coates, and uh, you know, even though Coates hasn't been doing particularly well in these debates, I, I think this one's already done. Okay, quick last uh, thought. I think there's been a couple of, debate, a couple of polls only, so I don't, 
doesn't really really know for sure. And I do think Coates tripped himself up the last one. He was asked a question about being a lobbyist, and he choked. I thought he would have been prepped for that one question that he had to know was coming, and he wasn't ready for it. Gentlemen, as always, thank you so much. The debate, by the way, is Friday night at 7 o'clock at IPFW's Reinhardt Music Center. Tickets are still available if you want to see the debate in person. We will be streaming it live on our website, Wayne.com. Then, if you miss it on Friday night, don't worry. Wayne TV will air the debate in its entirety on Saturday night, October 23rd. That is at 8.